I want to thank all of you for coming out and appreciate you spending your morning with us. Uh, there'll be a couple of housekeeping things. How many of you have cell phones? Raise your hand if you have a cell phone. It's exciting. It's pumped up. With your cell phone, how many of you have your social media attached to your cell phone? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? Not as many of you, but don't worry. We'll get you there. So if you do have social media, make sure you like us on Facebook. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're East Metro Echo on Twitter. And make sure you like our page on LinkedIn. All right? And if you take any pictures from the event, make sure you hashtag State of East Metro, hashtag East Metro, hashtag extra economic development. And as you notice, I'm just a big fan of hashtags. <laughs> uh, Marianne is going to be passing out a couple of an item to you. This is our events for the uh, rest of the summer. And we are excited for the, those events. And we thank the uh, city of Gresham for allowing us to, to have these events here this summer. We're really pumped up for them. Next month is going to be our legislative breakfast that we, uh, our legislative recap breakfast. We'll be partnering with the West Columbia Gores Chamber of Commerce and the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce to bring in some of our legislators and talk about uh, what has occurred in this 2019 legislative session. Can I get a woo? Anybody excited? Woo! Hey, there you go. Uh, now, one of the things that's always interesting is, is everybody doesn't get always excited about some of the legislative stuff, but they're always excited about the things that impact their business or their organization. And that is a great opportunity to come and learn about all those things that are happening. Also, in August, we'll be having our first ever pitch fest. Can I get one more woo-hoo? There, there we go. I got to get you excited in the morning. Uh, we're gonna, we want to encourage entrepreneurship in East Multnomah County, and uh, what better way to do that than have a pitch fest, an opportunity for both adult and youth uh, to uh, pro uh, have opportunity to pitch their business ideas, and the audience actually gets to decide who wins and who gets the money. And we're actually giving away cash money. So this is, you remember that game show, Win Ben Stein's Money? You get to win Jarvez's money. So come on out and see who, who gets the money and gets the investment. Um, and see some of the great ideas, especially from the youth. Everybody loves the kids. And you'll be surprised some of the really cool ideas uh, that some of our youth entrepreneurs are working on out here in East County. So I want to thank you again for all being here. Uh, also, if you do have some questions later for our esteemed panel, uh, you can feel free to write some of those questions on the back, Mariana, get those. Uh, and then from there, uh, we will uh, try to get to as many of those as possible. Okay. But first, I would like to bring up our sponsor for this event, uh, which is Northwest Natural. Give Nina from Northwest Natural a big round of applause. Yeah, give a bigger round of applause than that. I, I'm, I'm telling you, we're, 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 we're going to get it there, though. Well, he is a tough act to follow. I just wanted to say thank you guys very much for coming out today. We are really uh, pleased and proud to be able to sponsor this event today. We really believe in the future of East Metro and want to hear and support our communities out here. I don't want to take too long, but I just want to say thank you from your natural gas company. I want you to look at your June bills. You should be seeing about a $16 uh, dis uh, rebate on them. So we are, after 160 years, still providing you natural gas affordably, efficiently. And we're really excited about some legislation that just came out of Salem yesterday where we're going to be able to purchase some renewable natural gas, lowering the carbon footprint of the product we deliver to you every day. So thank you again, and let's uh, get the show on the road. Wood Village just got a wonderful, wonderful place. 
uh, we are everything you ever wanted in one square mile. Inside that one square mile, we have 31 acres fully developed and ready to go under the ownership of the Grand Ron tribes. Uh, it's called the Wood Village Town Center. There's already about 25 acres fully developed. That's Fred Meyer and Coles and so on. And then behind that, what used to be the Greyhound Park properties is another 31 acres ready to develop now. We get to meet with the economic development people from the Grand Ron next week, trying to remarket this property. And we're excited about the potential that the property has for this community and for the region. So it's kind of uncommon to have a city hall site for sale and then subsequently sold and redeveloped. However, this site is on five and a half acres of prime real estate, almost known as the 100% corner. So the city council, knowing that, knowing it's an asset for the community, said, hey, let's see if there's an interest in having that out on the market, generate some tax revenue, generate a benefit for the community that could last for generations. So they did. We got a wonderful partner in that development, Williams and Dame. They're building about 10,000 square feet of retail along the Halsey frontage here. Then the rest of the site will be programmed towards fairly moderate multifamily units, about 170 or so units. So it's going to be a great project. About two years in the making, we're coming up right to the finish line now on the close and sale of that deal. So construction will begin, well it's beginning now some fill work and then real construction begins probably later this summer. So we're all really excited about it. It's also kind of been a catalyst site for some other works along Halsey, a 61 unit uh, multifamily complex that's pretty high end just to the east of here. Uh, a few more kind of mid-range units to the west of here. So a lot of stuff happening Halsey and we're really excited about the project here. Since we sold City Hall, we need a new City Hall site. The council took a long look at where we could go, what could be a boon to the to the area. Council said, hey, why are we taking more land off the tax rolls? Let's go where we already own. That's our Donald Robertson Park. So at the front end of that, just to the south of, of the Halsey Street, basically, will be our new City Halls, what's being programmed. A really nice space. We'll have space where the community can rent it. It'll be right there at the park. We can do enhancements to that. So the whole project along Halsey is just going to really grow up and be something special for for the community and all of our guests. And Wood Village is open for business. Much of the work that we do in economic development for the city of Gresham is based on retention and recruitment, and that really places a heavy focus on real estate assets. Right now in the city of Gresham, we have 1.7 million square feet of speculative industrial space constructed ready for a tenant. Um, we're really excited about having that real estate available. Oftentimes when companies are looking to expand or relocate, they're looking for space that's available today. They don't have time to build a building on their own. So having that speculative space available gives us a lot of options when companies are looking. And it's really a busy time right now in terms of both expansion and recruitment. We are really excited about Element 6 joining the Gresham community. Uh, Element 6 is building a 60,000 square foot world-class manufacturing facility at the Gresham Vista Business Park on an eight acre site. They are under construction now, which is really exciting. They hope to commission the building at the end of this summer. Uh, equipment process manufacturing, uh, placement of that equipment is gonna take a little bit longer, so they won't be producing product until early next year, and they'll be employing about 60 people Total investment's about 95 million at the project, so we're really, really excited about that. Another project we're really excited about here in Gresham is the Rockwood Rising project in the Urban Renewal District. Rockwood Rising is a mixed-use development that's gonna focus on providing services to people of Rockwood. Nearly 50,000 square feet of the Rockwood Rising project is going to be focused on job and skill building and entrepreneurial development training for folks in Rockwood and Gresham. Some key tenants that are going to locate in Rockwood Rising include the Small Business Development Center with Mount Hood Community College, Metro East Community Media, and WorkSource Oregon. So a lot of service providers are going to be located right in the center of Rockwood Rising to make sure that residents get the services they need close to home. We're really excited to share that the Rockwood Rising project is going to break ground sometime this year with completion scheduled for 2021. Gresham is open for business. City of Fairview has instituted an urban renewal and in the urban renewal it ties into the main streets and Halsey as a funding mechanism for a lot of the infrastructure projects we want to do. Primarily the park and ride at the PG right away, uh, the roundabouts. Uh, so urban renewal will be used to spur development and, and invite businesses to take up root in, in Fairview. Um, we're all pretty excited uh, about the list of projects that we're, we're putting on it. Uh, you will see a very transformed Fairview 
in pretty short order. Main Street on Halsey is a multi-jurisdictional program between between Metro, Fairview, Wood Village, and Troutdale with other community partners to revitalize the Halsey corridor from 207th all the way to the river. Um, it has started in 2016 and, and we are getting pretty close to doing a lot of the remarkable things that we've been looking to do for the last three or four years. Uh, they're, they're going to be roundabouts structural changes to all of Halsey all the way down. We're going to have a uniformed code uh, between all three cities and a uniformed look so that people in East County and people who visit East County will uh, enjoy the experience. A lot of people are really excited about a lot of things. Uh, again, you know, one of the one of the concepts that we're playing with is a roundabout on 207th and Fairview Parkway. Uh, it's a way to slow down the traffic, and we will also use it as a gateway to as an entrance into Fairview and into all of Halsey. Really, Fairview is open for business. One of the you know best things about Troutdale is we have a quaint little downtown, and. Um, I believe that we're on the cusp of some much better things. Um, we have some new buildings going in. We had 10 new uh, townhomes slash condos put in downtown and they're all, they sold really quick. Um, but one thing I think is missing and that uh, the council and the city is going to start tackling is uh, branding Troutdale. I'm not sure we've done a good job of that. In fact, I know we haven't done a good job of that. And so the next steps forward is to actually brand our downtown, brand Troutdale. Um, what I hear a lot in the in the metro area is Troutdale is a truck stop, an, uh, an outlet mall, and where they send the rookie news people when the weather's bad. So, um, but I will say most recently what I hear is, oh, that's where Sugar Pine Drive-In is, right? And so uh, it's funny how a business after eight months can be like defined as uh, Troutdale, right? We have uh, started the cleanup on our renewal to lay the infrastructure. Um, to get it ready for uh, sale, uh, make it uh, more shovel ready. And so we're in the process of that. Um, we've accomplished quite a bit. We're um, in the middle of tearing down the, the few remaining uh, buildings that were down there. And I'm hoping to get that cleaned up and then up for sale um, in the next little bit. We're also will be starting on the waterfront park development down there. And so we got plans in place for that also. So. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an exciting project. It's just uh, it's a long time coming. Um, it's uh, had a rocky history, but I feel like we're on the right track right now. Chatdale is open for business. <laughs>
uh, once uh, each one of them conclude with their presentation. If you do have some questions, I would ask for you to write them down, especially as you uh, have them in your head. And then Marianne will come around and grab some of those and we can try to get some of those answers for you as we move along. And remember, if you're taking any pictures, make sure you hashtag us, hashtag East Metro. Uh, we always like to make sure we, uh, we tag folks and do all that stuff. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Nolan Young, City of Fairview. Yeah, it's okay to give him a hand clap. You can give him a round of applause. It's all right. Thank you. I will go on this side, actually. As the man behind the scenes, um, it was my intent to go stand behind that wall and talk to you, but uh, uh, apparently my spot's been taken. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning to just uh, add to the things that uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Cooper uh, said. He did steal some of my thunder, as we're pretty proud of our new urban renewal district, which I'll be talking about a little more. Our, uh, our current story uh, sort of began at the end of uh, 2017 when the city wrapped up work on its uh, new vision action plan. The things we heard in the survey that we took from the citizens is that uh, Fairview was a unique community, a quaint community, one that uh, wanted to continue to retain that, uh, that character. Also that uh, walkability was an important part of the community. As we looked at uh, development in the community, they were very interested in continuing to uh, expand the uh, commercial element of the community, particularly beverage and, uh, and restaurants. The, the Urban Renewal District has sort of been uh, framed to, to help take advantage of that vision that our citizens identified. Our Urban Renewal District is a little unique in that often an Urban Renewal District is formed and then you try to generate the property tax revenue that will drive the uh, district. In our case, we actually developed a, an incentive program that resulted in uh, construction taking place uh, in 16, 17, 18, and also 19 and 20 that uh, results in about 700 new uh, apartment complexes, uh, not complexes, boy, that would be amazing. <laughs> Let's go with apartments, new apartments or living units uh, with, uh, within the community. That uh, works out at about uh, 1,500 new, uh, new residents, but it also works out at significant uh, property tax value that the Urban Renewal District uh, captures and then allows it to uh, do projects to expand and, and benefit the community. We've, uh, through uh, 2018, we developed the Urban Renewal District and have developed our programs and are now ready to take and uh, start using the uh, funds that we're going to start generating beginning this year. The city also provided a bridge loan to the Urban Renewal District so that we could hit the ground running. One of the uh, things that we're going to be doing is uh, we'll be providing SDC assistance to uh, two businesses, but this time we're directing it towards commercial and industrial. We uh, want to see those two areas expand in the community. In addition, we'll be, uh, and the Urban Renewal District will be paying for those uh, SDCs so that the utilities will be able to continue to take and do their uh, activities. Another really neat project or, or program we have is our uh, grant program. Through this program, we'll be loaning money to uh, individual property owners to remove environmental challenges to their property and other barriers but also to do tenant improvements and to uh, buy resta restaurant equipment. Again, our citizens said we need more beverage and uh, eating establishments, so urban renewal is directed towards that need. In addition, uh, we'll uh, be doing a lot of infrastructure projects that will continue to allow the community to expand. Fairview is open for business, and we feel the future is bright. Thank you. Hey, well, they wanted more food and beverage because they wanted me to spend a little more time in Fairview. And they knew that would be a great way to get me there. They knew that would be a great way to get me there. Uh, 
But don't worry, I'll still spend time there whether or not there's additional restaurants. And don't other cities feel, feel bad. I'll still come to your restaurants and everything as well. Uh, so next up, we have Shannon Stady from the city of Gresham. You can give her a hand. It's okay. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? So just to settle the feud, Jarvez and I are going to arm wrestle for the first diamonds. Might, might take some bids, could raise some money for charity. I don't know. Pay-per-view, right? Pay-per-view. There we go. There we go. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning uh, about what's happening in the city of Gresham. Uh, I'm going to keep my remarks pretty short because I'd like to save some time for Q&A and hope to dive into some topics a little bit deeper. Uh, generally speaking, development in Gresham is booming right now. Uh, from new residential development, exciting mixed-use projects being constructed in our civic neighborhood in downtown, uh, all the way to new construction and dirt turning on the Rockwood Rising project. I think that deserves a round of applause. We're under construction. And uh, near and dear to my heart, we have several industrial developments underway. We have about 1.7 million square feet, Bill, 1.7 million square feet, he was giving me a bad time earlier, uh, of speculative industrial space already constructed with probably about 700,000 square feet in addition to that under construction now. Uh, many of those projects are speculative and are, we're seeing some tenant sign leases in those spaces, but some of them are also built to suit for users, which we'll talk about in a little bit uh, detail. We also have some city projects in the works. Uh, you might have heard about our Hitting the Streets project, which is rebuilding about 25% of our transportation infrastructure, local streets in the city of Gresham within the next five years. Uh, we also are working with TriMet on the uh, Division Transit project, which will bring high-speed bus line along Division using some federal funds and some expansion at the Graydon Sports Park. Being progressive, as you heard in our video, is just part and parcel of what Gresham's focus on. And so really, we are open for business. The city's 66-day industrial land use review process has been really successful. Our council and mayor were really aggressive and proactive in putting that code into place in 2014. And we've seen really good results from that uh, in terms of development. And just using the tools that we have available to us, programs like the Garage to Storefront program in our downtown and historic uh, civic neighborhood, the Enterprise Zone, Opportunity Zone, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit, and really utilizing the city's urban renewal programs has allowed Gresham to take advantage of opportunities in a healthy development market and really use assets to further our city goals. And so I look forward to answering questions, uh, and I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Just know, clapping is okay. You don't have to wait for my cue. So don't feel the need to wait. Just go ahead. Matter of fact, the next time we come, next person I introduce, let's see who can clap first. Does that work for everybody? Now, one thing Shannon didn't know is that when Willamette um, when Week has, the, has a give guide that they do every year, and they did an arm wrestling competition uh, this past, uh, I believe it was October, and someone on the stage happened to make it all the way to the semifinals. So just letting you know there is some competition here uh, when it comes to these uh, arm wrestling for these diamonds. Uh, so without further ado, give a big round of applause for Ray Young, City of Trout Dove. Oh, oh, Excuse me. Oh, the violence. Oh, the violence. Excuse me. Well, thank you, Jarvez. Um, economic growth in any city, I think, is set off, is begun by what type of leadership you have in the city. And I will tell you that in Troutdale, we have an amazing city council. I won't go to the past, the things that have been said, you know, over the last decade about the Troutdale uh, City Council. But right now, as you saw, we have uh, Mayor Ryan, who's just a great leader and a very dynamic force in town. We've got a council that is just an amazing mix of experience and new blood. Um, five of our council members have only been elected officials for a little over two years. They're um, under 45. And then we have great experience on a couple of them who've been around for 10 to 20 years on council. And so that's where economic growth, I think, begins, is with our city council. And I think they're bringing a great amount of uh, power to what we're doing out in Troutdale. Um, Troutdale really is at the beginning of a, what we believe is a long curve of growth um, out in East County. And I kind of break our development into four different areas. First of all, I want to talk about industrial, commercial and retail, housing, and livability. And I really can't see any clock this way, so if I go about a half an hour, Marty, will you throw something at me and let me know? 
All right. Well, first of all, industrial. Uh, we have really appreciated over the last decade the great partnership we have had with the Port of Portland. They have worked really closely with us to develop the old Reynolds aluminum site that's really turned into a, a model of great development of a former Superfund site. Um, and even after the 2.4 million Shannon, 2.4 million square feet of Amazon that opened a year and a half ago. We still have another speculative building. The Troutdale Cubes is going in right now, right across the street from Amazon, which is going to be about 450,000 square feet of uh, speculative um, industrial space. We're really excited about that one. The roof is going on right now. Um, we still have several lots in the industrial area that uh, Port of Portland has been working really hard on getting people to develop that. So we're really excited about what's going on there. And uh, the other nice thing about it, and if, if Representative Gorsuch was here, I'd shout out to him. Um, he worked really hard with the city a, a session before this one to make sure that we got adequate funding for the new overpass. So if you come into Troutdale, go past the outlet mall, that underpass, which hasn't been touched in probably 50 years since it was built, is now being expanded, adding lanes, adding sidewalks on each side. So it's really going to provide a great connecting point between the industrial land to our north and all the retail, commercial, and residential area on the south. We're really excited that Representative Gorsuch helped get that $17 million rider to the transportation bill uh, last session. So that's going on right now. We're excited about what that's going to mean for in, in engaging that industrial area. Now, second of all, the commercial and retail. Um, the URA, we always talk about the urban renewal areas, and Troutdale, I think, has one of the most exciting urban renewal areas in the metro area. I mean, everybody likes waterfront property, right? Well, not many people have waterfront property. In our urban renewal area, which is about 20 acres, which is just east of the Outlet Mall, right there where the freeway crosses the Sandy River, um, we are right now in the middle of a $2.5 million cleanup of that property. And we're really excited. You've noticed we've taken out the old sewage treatment plant. Right now, we're taking down the Pullery Building. It's slow because we found asbestos. And everyone, anyone who's worked with old buildings and asbestos knows the DEQ wants you to go slowly and do it correctly. So we're working on that right now, but we hope by the fall that that area will be completely cleaned up and ready to begin enticing developers to come that property because it is waterfront property, about a quarter mile of, of Sandy River frontage. But along that quarter mile of Sandy River frontage, to really highlight that area is we're going to put community space, a waterfront park. Metro worked with us to come up with the Sandy River access plan, and we're really excited about working on a great pathway because the pathway along the Sandy River will connect to the dike levee system that goes all the way up to Kelly Point Park. It'll connect under the UP bridge to downtown Troutdale. It'll be a great biking, hiking, walking pathway right along the river, which we think will be a real gem in East County. So we're really excited about that. Downtown, if you've been downtown lately, you see a great brand new 15,000 square foot building downtown. We're really excited what Bremick Construction is going to bring in there as a new tenant. Uh, we've got a brand new parking lot coming this fall in downtown Troutdale, expanding the one at 2nd and Dora to handle about 40 cars. We're excited about having that more accessibility for people coming downtown. And don't Getting out of downtown, even though Casey is right, downtown is really important because we have such a unique downtown, but up at Troutdale Marketplace, you know, years ago, the thriftway that was up there at Stark Street and 282nd, well, Junkie Yoshida's group has taken over that, and we're really excited because right, they're bringing in a new film studio is going to be taking over a big chunk of that space, and we have a new fitness company that's coming in there doing a 24-hour fitness in there, which is something new for Troutdale. So we're excited for that development up there. We always work with McMinimums because um, their McMinimums, that is their flagship property in the Northwest and the old jail. If it, does anybody remember the old jail that used to be there just to the east of that? They're right now beginning the process of remodeling that into a 40 room retreat center. So you can have a retreat, corporate retreat at the jail. So we're excited what McMinimans is doing there. Um, we're really excited, as Casey mentioned, the Sugar Pine Drive-In is something that we're excited because not only because of what it is, because Ryan and Emily who own that business are amazing chefs and amazing running of businesses, but the neat thing about what they've done there is it's a proof of concept. People used to think the only good places to eat were in Portland, you know, in the Inner East Side, go to Hawthorne and all the great food. No, we are packed out there at Sugar Pine and what it shows is, is a restaurant that provides that type of food to that type of customer is going to be successful no matter where you put it. So we're really excited that, that not only that they're there, but they show other businesses what we have available and what can happen if you have the right product. Housing, real shortly, this year we have over 300 housing starts. I don't think in the last decade Troutdale's had more than 25. So really excited what's going on there. We've got other infill properties coming. Uh, we're excited to see what Reynolds School District is going to do with their 22 acres there on Halsey. They've released it for sale. They haven't marketed it yet, but we're excited because it's zoned R7. So we may have a great new development there of housing that we're looking forward to seeing there. Um, 
We also, even though we've recently increased our system development charges, we're still in the lower half of the metro area, according to the Oregon Home, uh, Portland Home Builders Association. Finally, livability, which is one of the key things that I think that attracts people to community. One of the great things people talk about is schools. We are excited that this last fall, a brand new Trowdale Elementary School opened. From the ground up, a brand new building. If you go by, it's beautiful, just above downtown. Reynolds High School in town just did a huge remodel and expansion of their building. So we really are excited that the school district that's so closely tied uh, to Trowdale is really improving its uh, physical plant. And we think that's gonna impact a lot of people wanting to come and spend time at Trowdale. Last Last fall, we finished an $800,000 playground. Who gets to say that, right? Imagination Station was rebuilt into beautiful dimensions and a beautiful look right uh, just west of Reynolds High School. Love to have you take your kids, your grandchildren there. It's, it's just a really wonderful place uh, to come check out. Um, we uh, just the other night awarded two great grants to Solve and the River Watershed Group to continue the cleanup of the Sandy River and our neighborhood. So we're really caring about making a beautiful, pristine city in terms of cleanup. I just came back from New York City last weekend. Wonderful city. I love the city, but all my wife could keep commenting on, it's dirty around here. Don't people pick up their garbage? In Troutdale, we really care about that because that goes to livability and people want to come to a town that cares about what it looks like, and we think we've done that. So we're really excited in Troutdale about all the different areas that we're working on and expanding and we have a great council to do that with so if you're interested at all in whether it's a spec building out in the corporate center looking for a new place for retail or a restaurant and that's one last thing is that for the next year we reduced up to 50 percent all of our restaurant SDCs for wastewater in the downtown core area because we really really encourage that kind of service in downtown so we're trying to make sure we incentivize that and uh, Jarvez there you go wake up uh, time for you to come back up Thank you very much. Everybody try to get all these restaurants. I'm trying to eat healthy, and y'all trying to put all these restaurants in to get me off my plan. But that's okay. I'm going to stay on it. I'm going to stay on it. Uh, let's give it up for Bill Peterson. Hi. I'm Bill. Glad to see all you guys here. Isn't it exciting? Have you heard exciting enough times so far this morning? Yeah, I were excited. It's exciting to be excited. Um, Wood Village is also really a cool place. I mean, it's everything you ever wanted in one square mile. And no kidding, it really is everything you ever wanted, whether you wanted a recreational vehicle or you wanted to go to Walmart. It's all inside one square mile, I mean, except we don't have a school. There's not a school in our one square mile. So you do have to go a little bit of distance to get to that great school district facility. So here's what Wood Village is about. Let's talk about our new development that's happening at our municipal building. Uh, you, heard, uh, you heard on our video that our old city hall site, about 5.7 acres, has now been purchased. In fact, we close on the 28th. 173 mul um, uh, multifamily units will be going in there, 10,500 square foot of predominantly restaurants. These guys are all trying to induce restaurants. We got them coming. Uh, so they're going to be right there on the corner. See that great big tower? So when you pull off of, of Interstate 84, you're going to start headed towards Mouse Hood, and you're going to see this great tower that says, no kidding, you've arrived. It's Wood Village. You're here. It's the right place. Uh, that's what our governing board's about. They teach us to try to promote a great town, and we've got a great town. There's the multifamily design, then right down the street, 61 units, also with the same kind of high-end uh, development. Our population statistics, like Nolan mentioned, uh, when you br bring this many units into a small community, you have some pretty interesting impacts. We have 45 single-family units that Lennar uh, constructed inside the last year. So they got approval, and then 45 units had occupancy. I mean, it was pretty startling. It's amazing how fast these guys can put uh, housing units into the marketplace. So those are all in place. Uh, then with this multifamily and the other stuff that's currently confirmed, we're looking at something around six, 700 folks that'll be uh, joining a community that's currently 3,900. So I, you're talking about a pretty serious and interesting uh, percentage increase in total population. And then add to that the Grand Ron with 31 acres and their ability to have those acres developed. The other key thing that we've got happening that really is kind of a, a, a lot of fun um, is we've got some park system upgrades that we're going to be working on. Only, yeah, there they are. Um, and 
And, you know, the guys have talked a little bit about uh, some of the other features about livability that lets their community have some unique ability to, um, to allow us to enjoy living and working in East County, because uh, this is where we all want to live and work. So we're trying to do um, a combination of some wetland and, and a natural area park, uh, put together a, a, a gorge hub entry uh, to our existing uh, park, and then uh, we will be adding our new municipal building at uh, Donald Robertson Park, about 10,000 square foot. And as you can see, the, the city council has a vision of how Wood Village is gonna look. You're gonna see uh, that Pacific Northwest Lodge look. Um, it was created um, uh, with some development that had already occurred along uh, Halsey and with the Main Street on Halsey work throughout all of our communities. Uh, we've been able to find an uh, excellent architectural model and we'll be moving uh, our community along with the other developments along this area uh, forward to give it a whole different kind of image. Uh, we are also then acquiring. Um, boy, this this thing's really a tricky little device. I mean, I'm sliding through these slides in a hurry. You guys don't have to wait long because this thing's going to be over. Um, we're we're acquiring 4.7 acres from the Grand Ronde uh, that will be using as a wetland park, and uh, the tribes have indicated that they will be um, that they are amenable to the sale and they will be providing us with this area. So we'll be adding about five acres uh, to our parks facilities. Um, transportation is something that we all collectively uh, work hard to be able to be at the table. Um, you're, you're watching what's going on with Metro 2020 and their proposal to put those packages together. Uh, in Wood Village, we have been successful in redeveloping uh, pieces of Sandy Boulevard, working with our county, uh, Arata Road, 238th Street builds um, next year and the year after. Um, combine that with Main Street on Halsey and every single major roadway that transverses our community will have been rebuilt or reconstructed inside the last five years. So uh, we've got a pretty major um, transportational uh, undertaking. The Enterprise Zone, the Urban Renewal Agency, the Opportunity Zone, all of those key um, those those key economic development pieces that you've heard from each one of our partner communities. Actually, I was, I was making notes as I listened to our other partners present this morning. It's pretty amazing to recognize the depth and breadth of resource that's brought to the table by the four communities that you see in front of you today. Um, uh, Gresham's a pretty pretty serious sized community and they got a wide range of, of uh, tools and capacity. Combining the rest of the communities, you'll find that they've got an equally broad range and our ability to communicate and work together uh, through predominantly the leadership of our elected officials allows us to be at the table, able to play with anybody in the marketplace. So East County has got a lot of tools, a lot of skills, and a lot of capability. Um, the final thing that I'd like to talk about for just a minute is what makes Wood Village as a local government so incredibly unique? And yeah, well, I'll be retiring in November, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> that, that was supposed to be funny. You guys missed that altogether. I was going to say, that's what made us unique. No, no that isn't. We, we're a contract service delivery community. We've got 15.5 people that deliver all of our services on a full-time basis because we do almost everything by contract. We contract for police, we contract for fire, we contract for building services. We have a contract for planning, we have a contract for, for our attorney services, we have a contract for recreational services, we have some other city take care of the baskets on the street. We do, if you can do it with a contract more cost effectively than you can do it yourself, that's how we do it. Um, so there, there's a little piece of unique about Wood Village, which is, we get it done any way you can do it. That's the most cost-effective way, and usually, for us at least, that's been contracting with others to get it done. <laughs> so with that, I'll close, and I'd be glad to also hang out and answer questions with this esteemed and august panel. Bill's a little, Bill's a little too excited to retire. We're not letting him retire just yet. Uh, but he already has his 
uh, retired face on. That's why he's smiling all the time. So before you saw him work very hard, now he's smiling because he's excited to retire. Uh, so uh, we're going to start the kind of question and answer period. Um, you are welcome to use the microphones by there's a button that'll let you turn them on there so you don't have to uh, get up and run over here for every question uh, that we have. Uh, but we want to thank each of you for being here and I want to also make sure that we recognize uh, each of the city mayors for uh, of course allowing you to be here and being a part of each Metro Economic Alliance and for for putting all this work together and I want all of you to understand as as much as uh, there was some kind of friendly banter, friendly kind of competition here uh, between the cities, it is really cool the work that each one of our cities are doing and each city impacts the other. When they're doing cool things in Trowdale, that benefits Gresham. When they're doing cool things in Wood Village, that, that benefits Fairview. And we are all really one community, even though we do have a separate city. So I want to make sure that we recognize that. So we will start off with the first question, uh, seeing that our legislative uh, recap breakfast is next month on July 18th, 7.30 a.m. right here at Gresham City Hall like that seamless plug in right there you guys like that one um is there any legislation uh or potential legislation that is impacting economic development in your city and whoever wants to uh take it first is, is welcome to do so well I, I guess i'd like to start with a piece of legislation that would have created uh the requirement for uh prevailing wages to be paid in enterprise zones if enterprise zone benefits were provided to any property. Uh, we have multiple recipients for enterprise zone um, uh, benefits currently in our community. And if Davis-Bacon would have been a requirement, I think, um, I think at least from our property development standpoint, we have learned that that increase in relative value of construction costs would have stopped that project entirely. They simply would not have done the project. Um, so tying the enterprise zone benefit to prevailing wage would effectively eliminate the capacity for that benefit to have value for us over time. So uh, we were delighted to see that, that piece of legislation. I don't think it's effectively dead yet, because uh, it made it to, is it dead, dead? Okay, I, I, I knew that it had made it and it survived. It made it out of the committee and made it uh, uh, ways and means, but, I, is it, but it's not gonna get out. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. Quote us on that one if you would like. And if it comes back to life, don't quote us on it. <laughs> I think um, another one that we're not really sure what the impact will be will be uh, House Bill 2001, which is the Portland style of development in places that are not Portland. Um, I will say we worked really hard with elected representatives to try to get them to discourage HB 2001. If you're not aware, it essentially says in single-family home re zoned areas, you can print anything up to a quadplex. It really destroyed, and to a certain extent, uh, single-family uh, zoning in areas. And we're just not sure what the long-term impact is going to be on the livability of our city in terms of, you know, right now, street sizes and parking and utilities, uh, sewer water is all gauged for a single-family development. But if you potentially quadruple the density of that area if the full impact of HB 2001, it could be devastating for our ability to provide services to those areas and affect the livability of it. Um, just to get on a, a, you know, a, a high horse a little bit here, we really wish the legislature had waited until the Metro bond uh, for affordable housing had taken effect and started impacting the housing costs in the Metro area. We really wish they'd waited until the accessory dwelling unit a statute which they passed before had a chance to take effect and in addition to that the market factors as we've heard from all the cities we have literally over a thousand residential units being built out in these three cities right now and uh, we just wish the legislature had slowed down on more restrictions that are Portland model type for communities that aren't Portland and so that's disappointing but we're not really sure of the impact in the long term but it has potential I would uh, concur with Bill's comments about House Bill 24 around uh, prevailing wage and enterprise zone. Agree 100% that that legislation would have been a deal killer for many of our enterprise zone projects. Um, would also like to mention House Bill 2020 around cap and trade. Um, 
it is, let's see, currently it's passed in the House, uh, currently in the Senate. It's legislation that has uh, language relating to emissions intensive trade exposed industries, which includes for us aerospace and semiconductor. Uh, and so we're tracking the implications of that legislation on Gresham companies and kind of keeping an eye on that one. Molly, any, any you want to chime in on? Since given the opportunity, uh, uh, Senate Bill uh, 441 uh, e involves the uh, levy that uh, protects uh, major parts of our uh, community uh, along the, both the Sandy and the uh, Columbia Rivers. Um, due to other disasters in the country, the Corps of Engineers and FEMA decided that we needed to recertify that, uh, that levy. Uh, the uh, Area protected by uh, that levy includes about 48,000 jobs that uh, affect uh, our communities. Uh, the 441 uh, allows for a new entity to combine four flood control districts into a, uh, a single entity that will uh, both solve the uh, recertification of the uh, levy as well as to take and operate and maintain those levies for years to come in the uh, future. Uh, I think uh, there's a hope that uh, that'll be approved uh, uh, this uh, this week or next week and then uh, that, that uh, new entity will begin to address the, uh, uh, the concerns that uh, could indeed f affect business uh, in our area. Thank you very much. There's a lot of things happening towards the end of the session right now. So please be on the lookout for, for some of those things. And I want to just, just thank all those on the EME Legislative Committee. Uh, we have Nina here. We have Sue here. Dean's here as well. And appreciate all of your your work uh, during during this time. And a lot of the legislation that was brought up, EME has taken positions on. Our road and letters are submitted testimony. So we appreciate our cities being involved in that process because things that happen in Salem do impact our region and impact our organizations and businesses. Uh, moving on, how is urban renewal impacting your city? Some of you talk a little bit uh, about it, but uh, feel free to talk a little bit more about it if you would like. Well, for Tribe, I'll start with, I mean, for 20 years, we have had an ugly ex sewage treatment plant pretty much right in the middle of the city, right at our doorway, right at the freeway, right at the Sandy River, and we are finally, after 20 years, cleaning up the property, getting ready to put a trail in there, and I think it's gonna be an amazing development right on the waterfront. I mean, you hear about the Willamette Falls development in Oregon City, but other than that one, there's no almost shovel-ready developments on waterfront property with easy access to an interstate freeway than we have in Troutdale. So we're excited to see what that's gonna bring in the next couple of years as we get it ready for development. So having the ability uh, for the urban renewal, um, tax incremental financing, the ability to provide services there, we're really excited about what it's gonna do for Troutdale. The beauty about uh, urban renewal is uh, it um, it creates value that in return uh, can be uh, captured to allow for additional development to take place or even to take and pay off uh, for infrastructure and other development that takes place uh, uh, prior to that development. As I mentioned in Fairview, uh, we had uh, taken a, a leap of faith and had uh, taken on the respo uh, responsibility of incentivizing development in the community. Uh, by uh, creating an urban renewal district, we're able to take and utilize the value that has been created by that uh, leap of faith in the community to take and directly now uh, focus on specific development that we want in the community. Urban renewal is a financing tool. It's a great financing tool because your uh, citizens and local officials can identify what specific areas you want to focus on, and then you can use this financing tool to then specifically address those uh, needs and create the type of development you desire. Um, I think uh, my colleagues up here have talked quite a bit about um, sort of residential mixed-use components as part of urban renewal projects. Uh, I mentioned Rockwood Rising is under construction and the city is really excited about what that will bring to Rockwood and to Gresham proper. But I'd also like to touch on sort of an industrial traded sector component of our urban renewal district. Nolan mentioned some programs within urban renewal from financing. The city of Gresham has had a couple of industrial grant programs available that have really helped industrial development 
development in the city of Gresham. We had a pre-development services grant program which really helped sites uh, tackle big expensive issues like wetland mitigation. Uh, Blue Lake Corporate Park was a beneficiary of that uh, pre-development services grant. We also have a program called New Industries Grant which also reimburses companies who are expanding, adding machinery and equipment or building a new facility. And so that is really um, intrinsically tied to job creation in the city. Wood Village has just completed an amendment to the Urban Renewal Agency. Unlike, unlike what had occurred in Fairview, we formed our Urban Renewal District in 2010. And if you all remember, 2010 was kind of not exactly the peak of development potential uh, in a community. Our, our incremental value in urban renewal actually declined for three consecutive years. And urban renewal only works when you have the ability to tax an increment. So if you got a negative amount, that's not a good return. <laughs> so, so finally, we've got some return coming back to our, to our uh, agency, and we are now structuring incentive programs where we can provide a direct incentive predominantly to job creating capacities uh, and to other kinds of industries that pays for system development charges, parts of building charges, and so on. We've also done some utility relocation to enable development and so on. Urban renewal is a great tool, uh, and, it, and I think it's going to be a part of all four of our communities. And we can bring it to bear uh, in any of these communities to try to assist with future development. And a quick follow-up to that, some of you have already talked about uh, some of your incentives, uh, but how have, have, have some of your incentive programs uh, that you have been working, and are there any that are on the horizon that you uh, that you guys may have planned or that you may be willing to announce here in front of the world? And <laughs> Um, I, I mentioned uh, several programs that the city uses. Enterprise Zone has been critical to traded sector development in our community. We've had a lot of success with the program. It's been in place since 2006. We've renewed our zone once through the state statute requirements. Um, and it has been a really critical tool, um, not only for recruitment, we, you know, you've all heard about Element 6 and the Subaru facility constructed at Gresham Vista, but it's been more of a critical tool for expansions of companies already, already located in our city. So companies like Boeing, Teeny Foods, Portland Specialty Baking, Eclair Farm, all of those companies have utilized that program to add investment within our community and to create family wage jobs. It's been really critical. Jarvis is asking about you know potential new stuff coming up. I, I would like to mention Opportunity Zones. Um, the Opportunity Zone program is a really interesting program. We're just trying to kind of get our hands wrapped around what that looks like. When the process started with the state and the governor's office trying to determine which census tracts would be eligible or included in the Opportunity Zone, Economic development in Gresham didn't really think about that tool as an industrial tool. It really felt more like a residential mixed-use commercial tool. Now that we have it in place, we are finding that it actually is a really attractive tool for industrial development. And so we're excited to see what kind of opportunity that brings to our city. Uh, the state and Greater Portland Inc. are working on creating an online portal called the Oregon Opportunity Initiative where projects and investors can kind of input their data and be connected online um, so that we can encourage some of that Opportunity Zone investment in our community. So we're excited to see what that, what that will bring. When we talk about uh, uh, new programs, the uh, Fairview Urban Renewal District uh, is new. It's only a few months old. Um, we just started to uh, adopt our programs. The two programs that I mentioned earlier, both the SDC Assistance Program and the Private Developer Grant Program, have only been adopted within the last 30 to 60 days. So they're, uh, they're brand new programs that we have not yet started to uh, market. We do plan to start marketing uh, those, uh, uh, those programs. One of the things we've heard is we've tried to transition from um, mixed-use development that is heavy on the residential side to uh, a heavier uh, commercial component is that uh, the commercial opportunities in uh, Fairview are, are somewhat limited and it's uh, difficult to take and bring those forward. Uh, the urban renewal districts tr will be uh, trying to level that playing field by uh, providing uh, grants uh, to incentivize 
specific type of developments. First of all, we're uh, looking at our uh, vacant uh, property that uh, may have uh, challenges such as either uh, wetland uh, issues, uh, floodplain issues, uh, other issues that uh, make it difficult to develop and provide grant funds to do the necessary studies and obtain the permits necessary to move into development. Once development happens and we uh, uh, create uh, commercial space, often the developers are then hunting for uh, tenants to occupy that space. We've got about uh, 20,000 uh, square feet of uh, uh, commercial space that uh, are part of either uh, recently completed or uh, planned development uh, that is going to need to be occupied. So uh, our, through our grant program, individuals can obtain grants up to $100,000 to do uh, tenant improvements and specifically to purchase uh, restaurant equipment. In return, they need to commit to take and, uh, be operational for a specific uh, period of time. The program includes uh, targeting the uh, uh, Fairview Village area where we've long tried to have a, a live work uh, a space. Uh, we'll be providing uh, grant funds that allow individuals to solve some of the building code and fire code issues uh, related to living in a space that you're also creating uh, business activity in. Again, to try to take and bring uh, development uh, into uh, Fairview, because after all, Fairview is open for business. Um, I'm going to preface my comments with something I really don't like to do, which is compliment Gresham. Um, but uh, I can say it only because I worked in downtown Gresham for 30 years. And one of the things that I've always enjoyed about historic downtown Gresham, and I was on the historic downtown Gresham board for four years, is, is that you can go downtown Gresham and there is a lot of amenities within walking distance for restaurants, a lot of choices that you can do in downtown uh, Gresham. We realize that in Travdale, because we have such a unique, identifiable, uh, many people say cute downtown, that we have a lot of tourism because we are at mile one zero of the Columbia River Gorge Highway, uh, right on the freeway, um, the gateway to the gorge, that we need to provide those kind of tourism and come downtown park walking amenities like downtown Gresham. And so one of the things that the council did about a month and a half ago was realizing that, you know, in this day and age, the high cost of providing water, sewer, et cetera, infrastructure, that sometimes restaurants, which are high users of uh, wastewater services, their system development charges can be quite huge and you might be a barrier to restaurants coming into your downtown. So the council approved um, a, a way of up to half, half of the wastewater SDCs um, over the next year. And if you're going, well, what does that mean, Ray? Well, if you're putting in a 100-seat restaurant in downtown Travdale, that in and of itself will save you $50,000 in creation of that restaurant in downtown Travdale. So for the next year, we have space downtown. If you want to put a restaurant down there, we can save you $50,000. So if you want a restaurant of that size. Um, it's incrementally, of course, less for smaller restaurants, but we're trying to create an atmosphere downtown um, that entices people to come and stay or pass through on their way to the gorge. And uh, we are excited about that possibility to in incentivize uh, development in downtown Troutdale. In the uh, spirit of competition, uh, those of you who are, are math wizards, 50% uh, uh, is 50% uh, higher than uh, total assistance uh, like uh, <laughs> Fairview will be providing. We have fun times out here, Fairview, so to speak, though. so yes. Not a great view. And, and Shannon talked a little bit about this, but uh, while we're on zones, uh, just quick thoughts on opportunity zones. I know um, Rockwood CDC provides a couple of opportunity zone conferences. There's been a couple of funds uh, that have started specifically in East County, not just uh, in Oregon. But um, uh, how do you see opportunity zones kind of impacting your, your cities? The Opportunity Zone is a major new financial tool. We've been able to bring it to the table on four different occasions already. We have we have a significant part of the investment that's occurring on the municipal property is being uh, financed directly through an Opportunity uh, Network. Um, so we're we are being we're able to bring the Opportunity Zone to the table quickly. Uh, it was interesting, and part of how East County actually physically works. As we were trying to anticipate how areas could potentially be named for the Opportunity Zone, the cities of Wood Village, Fairview, 
and Gresham gathered, we put together a consolidated uh, application, identified groupings of areas that could most effectively uh, be utilized so that we can compete statewide. And we did it very, very effectively, naming all of the uh, designated locations that we identified as part of the state package. Uh, so, so that's what makes this whole eastern area is so different. Uh, we compete, and, and I w I've been very careful about not saying anything bad about Nolan's giveaway of system development charges. Now, I happen to live in Fairview, and what that really means is my utility rates are higher so that he can give these guys stuff. That's what it means. Okay, I haven't said anything uh, because I want to be supportive of how our communities work. And, but the Opportunity Zone really is a magnificent tool that is bringing millions of dollars to our table uh, for the first time. I have to respond to that. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, because of our urban renewal, what uh, Bill has identified as a giveaway actually has turned out to be... Uh, Finally. Uh, has turned out to be something that really has incentivized uh, um, opportunities in Fairview. And so as I've said, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, Fairview is open for business. Well, on that note, uh, I would like to make a shameless plug for the Oregon Opportunity Initiative portal. So if anybody out there in the audience has a project that is in need of financing, gap financing, that tool is going to be really useful for you. You can plug in a minimum amount of details on your project. There's a gentleman working on behalf of Greater Portland, Inc. and the Economic Development District in this region. His name is Stephen Brooks. I'd be happy to connect you directly with him. He's vetting all of those projects for funds that are already put together, not just local funds like Rockwood CDC fund, but national funds, trying to connect those projects with Opportunity Zone funding. So if you need any additional information, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, directly to me. I'd be happy to connect you with that. I want to uh, add something here that maybe you've seen going on up here, which is the banter back and forth between the four cities. But I want you to understand, for economic development reasons, you need to realize that the four cities work together really, really well. We have a great deal of respect for uh, the people who work for each city. We have a great deal of respect for the council and the mayors of each city. And uh, we really enjoy working um, all four cities together. And it's been a great partnership over the years, and we see that continuing. Now, since I did coin the open for business phrase, I will be charging Nolan a nominal fee every time he uses it uh, today at one of our events. So uh, I expect uh, Marianne will be sending that invoice here a little shortly once we get the final tally uh, at the end of the event. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, what are some transportation issues that may be affecting your city or impacting economic development in your city? Well, for Troddell, as I mentioned earlier, we are really excited about the new uh, overpass that's going there right on 257th. Um, we're also excited, again, we partner with Multnomah County and partnering with other cities. And what we're doing on 238th, the county is expanding the sidewalks and redoing that all the way down the hill. Right now, Multnomah County is working on Cochran Road, which is the kind of the border between uh, Troddell and Gresham and improving that. And we're excited down the road that hopefully we'll work on the other uh, choke point on Troddell Road where Beaver Creek goes underneath. But there are several projects that we're really working on that we hope will expand and make it easier for people to get through. The other transportation issue which we're excited about is that TriMet has been very open to working with us to expand their routes. Uh, one of the concerns that we have, we have a large apartment complex at 242nd Cherry Park going in right across the street from Subaru and the Gresham Vista Park, which is a great location for an apartment complex, but tri uh, TriMet has no bus lines that go to that corner. But they've said they have it on their radar screen in the future. They're going to accelerate that. So we hope to get that uh, last missing piece between Gresham and Tridale for a mass transit going there, too. So we're encouraged that the partners are working well in the, in the community to be able to get better transportation opportunities and improving what we have. Yeah, I would just build on what uh, Ray said. That connection with TriMet uh, and having all of the partners you see up here at the table um, working on behalf of not only residential mixed use development, but traded sector companies who also need that bus service, Subaru, uh, companies that are located at Gresham Vista has been really key and critical for our successes. And so we'll continue to do that and to continue to work together to try and make sure that we have adequate service to all of our um, key locations within our cities.
I was going to let Bill speak because I, uh, I kind of hate to let him have the last word, but uh, um, I'll go ahead and uh, proceed at, the, at this time. Uh, when I had talked, I talked about uh, uh, how in our vision action plan, uh, walkability was an important, um, in, important thing to our, our, our community. One of our challenges uh, is uh, Northeast uh, 223rd, uh, where we, uh, we lack uh, pedestrian uh, facilities. Uh, one of our obstacles has been the uh, Northern Railroad undercrossing on 223. Uh, it's uh, narrow uh, right now. If you happen to be walking down that direction or, or riding, you have to go into uh, the uh, narrow right-of-way and scoot through before uh, uh, the, uh, a car or truck, which uh, number is increasing, uh, challenges you. Uh, the uh, uh, city has uh, uh, joined with uh, the railroad and uh, also with uh, East uh, Multnomah County Transportation Committee to bring funds forward to do uh, design work uh, on that intersection to try to put a pedestrian bicycle undercrossing on one side. That should be completed sometime in June and or July and then we'll be able to identify what those costs are and proceed with that. In addition, uh, East Multnomah County uh, Transportation Committee is also pursuing uh, flexible funding uh, funds to go ahead and uh, put pedestrian improvements and bike improvements uh, on all of uh, uh, 223 from uh, Sandy to that, uh, to that railroad crossing. During uh, Mayor Cooper's comments, he mentioned uh, roundabouts. Uh, how many of you are a fan of roundabouts? Uh, as I've been saying, every opportunity I, I get, uh, uh, what roundabouts do is they uh, allow you to slow traffic down but move it quicker. Uh, another phrase I've heard is they smooth traffic. Uh, not having to stop at a, a traffic light uh, uh, allows you to actually get through an area quicker, but uh, because a roundabout requires you to take and reduce your speed unless you wish to, wish to take it on two wheels. Uh, the uh, it uh, also slows traffic and, and, and calms traffic uh, down. Uh, we have a, a major uh, truck route running through uh, Fairview from uh, I-184 uh, into Gresham on uh, Fairview Parkway. It gets a lot of traffic, uh, over uh, 20,000 uh, cars a day, and as a, uh, it's a, a fairly, uh, fairly quick uh, traffic. Uh, but uh, I drive that uh, two times a day, and often I sit at the... Uh, intersection and, uh, and sit at the intersection and sit at the intersection. Well, since the concept of placing a roundabout at that intersection has uh, moved forward, what I do now is I sit at that intersection and I envision how the cars are moving if the uh, roundabout was there. It's amazing. Uh, currently, we're working on uh, design work uh, to um, create a roundabout at that location. We plan on using uh, urban renewal funds to as seed money to bring forth the uh, funding that will allow that to uh, happen and we're hoping that that becomes sort of an anchor for one end of uh, the uh, Halsey Corridor project that involves all three uh, communities of Wood Village, Troutdale and uh, Fairview and we're hoping that uh, uh, Troutdale will be able to put a roundabout on the other side and we see roundabouts as potential um, solutions to uh, several of the intersections. Uh, when we did the traffic uh, study to determine if a roundabout would work, we actually found out that uh, the intersection right now is uh, functioning marginally and roundabout uh, fixes that and, and actually uh, helps it uh, function more. So that's one transportation tool that we hope to be using in the future. As I mentioned in my base presentation, uh, we've been able to effectively work with all of our regional partners to improve all of the major throughputs uh, in Wood Village. Halsey has been reconstructed, 238 uh, will be completed uh, beginning in construction on 2019, a route road through the core of our community. Uh, Gleason is being reconstructed and overlaid. Uh, Gresham's doing a piece of that. Uh, this summer, the county has on their uh, radar for 2020. Sandy Boulevard and its completion uh, will then add that southern leg. Those are the transportation pieces that are internal to our community. Then we worry a lot about that last mile that gets you into the trip area, uh, particularly uh, into the industrial areas in Fairview, where we have so many jobs and so many folks that 
uh, could potentially use other methods of transportation and do not have viable options or alternatives. Um, so we worry about that a lot, and then we're, we're concerned about how the whole regional transportation network really functions over time. Uh, what are we going to do with that I-5 corridor, and what's going to happen at 84, and all of those things that stop us cold. Um, I find it interesting that I now have to plan my, I have, I have three grandkids, or three kids in the, in the Portland metropolitan area and now seven grandkids. So I got events I got to get to, you know, kind of all over the area. Uh, and I have to do all of that planning around what the heck's the traffic going to be. Because I don't have alternative methods to be able to get to Sherwood and Wilsonville and other places that I've got to get to. Um, and, and all you have to, and you just spend an immense amount of time trying to figure out what are you going to do about traffic? Well, Metro 2020 is going to try to get a piece of that. Uh, we've tried to do a piece of that with the corridor uh, work that was done um, out of the 2017 legislative work. Uh, but I don't see answers. That's where I think we collectively still have a lot of focus uh, to try to put together. How, how are we going to move our region? Uh, Bill uh, mentioned the uh, uh, Metro 2020 uh, transportation uh, bond. Uh, Metro is currently taking a, a survey of the greater Portland area about uh, how people get around and how they, uh, uh, they feel the uh, system needs to be improved. That uh, survey uh, will uh, go until June 30th. Uh, Jarvis, I'll send you a link unless you've already picked that link up and sent it out so that uh, everyone can respond. Let's not, not, let's not let others determine uh, how uh, East County is going to take and have its transportation needs net, met or not met. Uh, each of us need to weigh in on that survey so that uh, our needs are also considered. Well, feel free to send that one to me and I'll make sure everyone gets it. And uh, that was a very, very nice way of sliding in to get the last word done. That was that was fantastic. I just that was that was that was an art. That was that was an art. You did you did it. I almost didn't even notice that you did it, but that was that was fantastic. Do I get some credit on my uh, Fairview is open for yeah, business? Uh, <laughs> uh, he just said it one more time, so we will again add that to uh to to the fee so uh each one is going to have a about a minute to give some final thoughts but as they're thinking about those final thoughts that they're going to give i'm going to take a few minutes and uh, uh give you a little update from the east metro economic prosperity forum that occurred last month uh it was a fantastic event we got some nice uh pictures up christian kaler was a keynote speaker uh, we have some uh, wonderful small business panel. Uh, we appreciate Wells Fargo for uh, for not only facilitating that panel, but for being our chief sponsor and all the uh, sponsors that made the event so fantastic. Uh, from the event, uh, we have uh, four uh, kind of focus area groups that are housing, land use, transportation infrastructure, education and workforce development, and industry and entrepreneurship. And each came up with some various ideas, and then everyone at the forum voted on those ideas to see which ones would be the most uh, strategic to move forward with. From our inaugural one in 2018, um, the, the number one vote getting idea uh, was a transportation hub at Mount Hood Community College. Uh, we then took that particular uh, idea, presented it at uh, Greater Portland Inc.'s Greater Portland Tech Challenge, and we actually won the most equitable project award for that uh, presentation. Yeah, you guys, you guys got to clap a little bit about it. It's okay. And it's uh, something that has uh, continued to be worked on. Uh, West Columbia Gorge uh, worked with Metro and commissioned a study on transportation demands uh, uh, for, for commute options uh, that has been released. And there's some opportunities to work with, uh, with Oregon Solutions and some other partners to really work on uh, particular last mile connectivity issues uh, in, in East Monoma County. Uh, but... I will show you, these are some of the poll results uh, for some of our um, 
for some of our breakouts uh, for the industry and entrepreneurship. Uh, the number one vote getter was was utilizing capital partners uh, to leverage their work. So we want to make sure to increase the amount of capital that is available out in the region. Uh, that's why if you got an emails from us recently, um, we have partnered with uh, with Kaiser, one of our members, uh, to help promote the Inner City Capital Connections Program to help uh, small business owners in the area uh, who want to grow have access uh, to capital and be a part of a national program. So if you have some small businesses that are looking for growth opportunities, feel free to connect them with me and we can get them connected uh, to that program. And you can see how the vote went for some of the other areas uh, up here. Uh, very close where, where community events, uh, where there can be some business to business community um, uh, connection opportunities. And uh, we're excited for, for some of those, which will be here in August for the Startup East Metro event. Uh, for uh, housing options, uh, we have uh, leverage opportunity zones for community benefit uh, receive the, the most votes. And we really do see opportunity zones as an opportunity. You ever hear people say no pun intended when they completely uh, intended a pun? Well, I did. So we think it's a great opportunity uh, for the region. And it seems so does everyone else as that one receives 61 percent of the vote. For land use and transportation, uh, looked at trans uh, transit-oriented development, uh, main streets of Halsey, uh, things that connect uh, Clackamas County uh, to, to our area as well, as well as Columbia County, and connecting uh, our region to the other counties and other uh, opportunities in the area. Uh, received the most votes in that particular one. And for education and workforce, is educational and workforce collaborative uh, to really coordinate wraparound services. And so one thing that we didn't talk as much about uh, today was, was, was education, but education uh, really impacts economic development. So much so that in October, we will have the State of Education event. Uh, so be prepared for that one. We'll have our superintendents uh, come out to talk about about uh, education, as well as uh, Mount Hood Community College. Uh, give a wave to Dr. Uh, Scari right there. She, she was chair of our, um, our education and workforce uh, uh, task force breakout group. So uh, what you will start seeing in your inbox uh, is we're, we're going to continue these conversations moving forward with a couple of task force forces that, that are designed to address uh, connecting people in the region to address some of these areas. Uh, one of which is our transportation and land use uh, committee. I'll give a big, uh, have Steve, could you wave to everyone? Uh, Steve is our chair. Gotta give a big round of applause for Steve. <laughs> Steve Mintiman of Harper, Hoff, Peterson, and Regellis. Ha! I got it. Uh, I always have a problem saying that one. We appreciate their work. They're going to have some, some meetings along uh, that front with transportation. Uh, so please see uh, some of those. And they'll be able to, uh, though, some of those will be online meetings. So you don't have to worry about transportation uh, getting to the meeting. You could just click right from your desk or even from your cell phone, which I know almost all of you have because half of you are looking at them. So, uh, <laughs> so I know you have a cell phone, you have a smartphone, you'll be able to connect on those. And you'll be seeing those. Those start next month uh, so you'll be seeing invites to those if there's a particular committee you would like to be a part of whether it's housing land use and transportation educational workforce industry and entrepreneurship or if you want to come hang out on the legislative committee even though it's uh, towards the end of a session uh, you can see me you can see Marianne she has uh, some of my cards please feel free to take one shoot me an email we'll make sure you're on that uh, particular list so now uh, I'm going to turn it over and ask each of our cities to kind of give their uh, closing arguments. And if you want to use Open for Business, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll throw in a free one for you uh, for, 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 this, for this last round. So I'll turn it over. And Ray, you want to start since you're closest to me? Great. The only thing I want to say is that we will soon have 16 acres of prime retail commercial residential space, waterfront property uh, available for development. So if anybody has any ideas or anybody might be interested in talking to us about developing the urban renewal area, uh, we're really excited about that. So that's the only pitch I want to put in before I pass it off. 
I'd just like to say thank you uh, for everybody coming out this morning uh, for your engagement in the region and the work that we do. Um, as it's been mentioned up here, uh, these four cities really work together in a pretty unique way. Um, I've done economic development in a lot of different places and you don't always get the benefit of having partners at the table, um, even with a little jousting and ribbing, um, but that's what makes it fun. So thanks everybody, have a good day. I'd like to add to the comment of uh, the partnership that uh, these four cities have. Uh, we're constantly looking for opportunities to partner together to not only better provide economically uh, services uh, to our citizens, but also to increase the uh, quality of life and economic development. Bill listed all the uh, contracts he had. Uh, what Bill was really listing is all the partnerships we have. We're always looking for partnerships to move things uh, forward. And with that in mind, uh, Fairview, Troutdale, Gresham, and Wood Village are open for business. He spoke on my behalf. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to thank each one of our panelists. We'd like to thank Northwest Natural for sponsoring. I want to thank each one of you for being here. And this is the third year that we've done this, and it gets more exciting every time. So I thank all of you for being a part. Enjoy the rest of your day. See Marianne. Uh, if you're not a member yet, and you need to be, because you do, see Marianne. She can get that taken care of for you. And enjoy the rest of your morning.